Yeah, I'm very glad to, uh, to be invited here uh, to present our progress, I mean, uh, of the OS we developed within new uh, based on the SEO4. And uh, I guess, I mean, most of you guys already uh, were in the talk of Yan Yan's uh, uh, presentation yesterday. And uh, it's more on the technical side, and I will probably focus on a little bit, I mean, high-level vision and also our uh, timeline uh, production uh, roadmap previously and also some future uh, planning, I mean, uh, also with our uh, community. So a quick question about myself. Uh, I'm currently the uh, associate VP uh, of engineer at NEW. Uh, I'm leading the team we call the uh, platform software. Uh, another uh, name actually we, we announced in our uh, uh, new uh, innovation day is called uh, SkyOS. That's basically the concept uh, uh, branding actually within the uh, within you. Uh, actually, SkyOS is kind of like a, a comprehensive uh, suite of platform software, and uh, including uh, hypervisor, a couple of operating system, and a bunch of middleware within it. And uh, uh, it is totally designed for what we call the software uh, defined vehicle uh, from the new perspective. And uh, before new, actually, I have been working on the automotive driving uh, industry actually for a couple of years. Uh, I was working uh, with uh, uh, Waymo and on the ML uh, runtime team. And also, I was leading this uh, Baidu uh, Apollo OS team working on this uh, uh, operating system and also the runtime framework uh, on the vehicle to support the automotive driving uh, workload. So today I will uh, talk about uh, three topics. Uh, the first one is the uh, software defined vehicle and the Sky OS in uh, involvement, involvement in new. And the second is the journey of this uh, SEL4 based OS I mean, uh, in new. And the third one is the, about uh, some future planning and also the community collaborations we can uh, expect in the future. Uh, automobile industry actually is, uh, has a very long history, I mean, over uh, 100 years. And uh, it has been uh, evolved into a multiple uh, error, I mean, uh, we can tell. Uh, previously, I mean, for a very uh, long time, it's mostly like a mechanical error. So, I mean, all the, I mean, the vehicle are built on, uh, on top of these uh, mechanical parts, and uh, they're there's no like a electronic, I mean, uh, component at all in those vehicles. And then, I mean, 40 or 50 years ago, I mean, the vehicles start, I mean, adopting more electronic parts actually in, uh, inside. But uh, those are very simple components, uh, we can tell. And basically in those vehicles, I mean, there will be no OS or like a very minimum OS, I mean, uh, inside the vehicle. Mostly people, I mean, uh, program a little bit, maybe use assembly language or something. That's very uh, bare metal uh, uh, OS concept. And then, I mean, in the last uh, uh, 15 or 20 years, actually we start, I mean, moving, I mean, from uh, into this uh, digital era. So in digital era, I mean, we are probably familiar with a lot of things like uh, uh, the infotainment system become like a, a more interactive with some screen. I mean, you can, I mean, you play with various, I mean, uh, simple applications on those infotainment system. And also down there, I mean, on the chassis, I mean, the motion control domain. Also there are a lot of, I mean, uh, uh, we call the ECUs. I mean, those are the control units actually well, uh, uh, distributed ar around this uh, uh, vehicle to control various, I mean, specific functions. I mean, those things, I mean, so we see the new era we call it the component-based OS. I will elaborate a little bit, I mean, for this in the next slides. And then right now, actually, we are moving into a, a new phase we call the smart EV era, and also with this uh, AI, I mean, uh, way, I mean, coming up, we can see, I mean, this fundamentally, I mean, change our view of the OS within the vehicle. I mean, because, I mean, those vehicles actually are not only like a automatic driving or maybe like infotainment we can play with. I mean, those vehicles actually are more connected, I mean, with outside of the world and also within the vehicle. I mean, there are so many ECU domains, I mean, the vehicle and they are actually right now working together collaboratively, not uh, in the isolated way.
So uh, most of the time, I mean, in the market, we still call those vehicles uh, functional vehicles. Uh, in the, those functional vehicles, actually, OS are primarily, I mean, tailored for the component suppliers. Typically, you will see, I mean, two names, I mean, pop up very uh, popular in the automotive industry. Like uh, one is Autosar. It's very popular, I mean, used in this uh, motion control domain. And another one is called Qnix, and uh, you guys are also familiar with. And uh, Qnix are adapted into this OS for the vehicle domain, I mean, in the last, uh, I believe, 10 years. For example, like a digital cockpit, and also they try to enter this domain for the automobile driving. But uh, yeah, we, we also, I mean, see other options that you potentially on the, in this, in this uh, use case. And you can see actually the OS actually is introduced, I mean, to uh, enhance the reusability of the components. It's not like uh, uh, we consider the vehicle, I mean, as the whole solution, I mean, how we can design our OS, I mean, for the vehicle. So basically it's all the uh, your OS are designed for each of the components, I mean, from these uh, suppliers. Then, I mean, in terms of development model, it's also, where, um, I, I would say, very fragmented and disconnected, I mean, in the current uh, uh, industry. Uh, for example, I mean, if you typically see there are three domains, like uh, uh, ADAS, uh, called uh, assisted uh, driving, and uh, digital copy, and uh, uh, smart vehicle control. And in each of the domain, I mean, you will see there is a dedicated team, I mean, working for this domain and they own the whole uh, hardware design and also they own the whole vertical software stack within this domain. And each of the team, I mean, mostly, I mean, develop all their uh, hardware uh, operating system, middleware application within their team. And uh, there will be like an interaction, I mean, uh, among those domains, but it's very limited. And also, it has to be well designed. Otherwise, I mean, it hard to coordinate between the different domains. So that's why we call it very um, legacy development model. Actually, uh, for the domain-based development, I mean, uh, within the uh, automotive industry. Then, what sets apart of this uh, Sky OS? I mean, as the full domain uh, vehicle OS. So uh, I put uh, two aspects I mean, in this slide. Uh, on the left side is the technical, technical side. So in terms of the E architecture, so we already transitioned I mean, from this uh, distributed computing architecture uh, into the centralized computing architecture. So if you really I mean, look inside the vehicle, uh, traditionally there are over maybe like, a, a, I would say like over 100 I mean, chipset in the vehicle. They are super distributed, and uh, each of the chipset is uh, dedicated for some special function. But uh, it's not very powerful, but it, it's I mean, working really good, actually, for this uh, special function. And our new computing architecture is a centralized computing architecture. So basically, we group all these uh, uh, powerful computing units into a single domain. We call the uh, CCC, the Central Computing uh, uh, Domain. And then we have also have the zoom concept. So basically, on the motion motion control and the body control side, we we try to use a very powerful uh, MCU chipset. So potentially, we can consolidate like uh, hundreds of I mean MCUs into a few of them uh, eventually. And those are very powerful, very uh, integrated, and we can consolidate into a few of them easier for us to control and manage, I mean, uh, in terms of this uh, uh, EV perspective. And also we design our whole system, I mean, based on the SOA concept, it's the service-oriented architecture. So previously, I mean, just as I said, I mean, if the domain want to talk to each other and they need to design a very special function call, I mean, to call into another domain, and they need to exactly know, I mean, where the other function sits uh, in some domain and how to call them with some specific parameters. But right now with the SOA concept, actually we build up this uh, SOA across the vehicle in the motion, uh, motion domains and uh, in the body controls, in the digital copy and in the AD. And all these domains, I mean, call, can talk to you in the same language. 
and they don't need to care. I mean, where the service was deployed within the vehicle. I mean, they were able. They are able to discover the service and they're able to talk to each other in a very natural way. So that's kind of like a, a, we uh, redefine this whole vehicle. I mean, based on the ISO, it make it more flexible, more adaptive for our future uh, uh, integration. And the third one is the high reliability, uh, low latency, and the high bandwidth. And this is also very important because in the uh, automotive uh, domain, I mean, safety, reliability is kind of the top uh, uh, concern, I mean, for the, all the hardware and all the software suppliers. And we have to, I mean, put very uh, high safety standard, I mean, for within this vehicle. And uh, in terms of, I mean, our uh, new platform, we call the NT3, that's the third generation of that platform. And we also uh, build up our uh, Ethernet-based, I mean, high, high bandwidth uh, backbone within the vehicle. So previously, you know, actually, the vehicle are built mostly on top of this uh, canvas, I mean, uh, infrastructure. I mean, it's very efficient, but it's kind of uh, has its own limitation on the bandwidth. Uh, with the Ethernet, actually, we can unleash, I mean, a lot of things, I mean, within the vehicle. I mean, they can talk to each other with high bandwidth and also uh, with very low latency. And also the, third, uh, the fourth one is the chipset support and tool chain. We build up, I mean, uh, a lot of, I mean, tool chain, I mean, to support, it's, just as I mentioned, it's not only one chipset. There is various chipset within the vehicle. We have to support all of them and build strong and uh, very uh, easy to use tool chain, I mean, for all this downstream development team, they can uh, leverage our capability. And uh, I mean, the challenge is also uh, on this uh, organization side. Uh, just as I mentioned, I mean, previously, I mean, most of the development are the ECO domain-based uh, development model. So the team are uh, isolated and, uh, I mean, they don't work with each other very closely. Right now, actually, uh, by breaking this uh, ECO domain boundary, actually, we break the department boundary as well within this company. So people have to uh, work together, I mean, from day one, because, I mean, their uh, application, their uh, middleware, I mean, has to, I mean, communicate with each other, work with each other to achieve some uh, function. So that's kind of very challenging, I mean, from the company's perspective. And also, uh, the last one is the supply, uh, supply chain collaboration, uh, collaboration model. So we have our own uh, 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 SkyOS concept, we want to, uh, we want all these uh, supplier can uh, use our own software stack eventually, and uh, then everything will be integrated, I mean, more seamlessly without any uh, additional efforts. Right now, I mean, a lot of suppliers are using like a third party uh, uh, vendor solution. I mean, that works with us, of course, but uh, uh, it takes a lot of efforts, I mean, to integrate their parts into our ecosystem. Then this is actually we presented, I mean, uh, last year and also uh, this year again uh, in a new, a new innovation day. So uh, you will see actually the top layer is application and the down there is the uh, hardware and the drivers. The middle layer is what we call the uh, SkyOS. Uh, that's kind of like a very big uh, branding uh, uh, for Neo. Uh, there are three layers actually in the SkyOS, and uh, the down layer is the SkyOS virtualization. This is the SkyOS Edge, the uh, hypervisor we build actually for the for the uh, resource isolation purpose for the for those very uh, powerful SOCs. And then uh, in the middle layer, we have a couple of kernels. We uh, we introduce like a SkyOS IL. I mean, for those uh, motion control domain. And the Sky OSI, that's what we emphasize, I mean, with this uh, uh, microkernel-based architecture uh, OS, we build for this body control domain right now. And also we have the uh, Sky OS R, I mean, it's kind of the uh, deeply customized uh, real-time kernel, lens kernel for the uh, automotive driving domain. And also Sky OS C is the uh, deeply customized Android version for the digital cockpit. And on the top layer is the Sky OS middleware. So we build a lot of things, I mean, from scratch as well, including uh, SOA framework, uh, FOTA, uh, DCL. DCL basically is the data loop, I mean, data collection uh, loop. So we are able to, I mean, collect all the data from the vehicle and uh, manage them in the cloud. And also security and safety and uh, network. I mean, uh, those, I mean, canvas, Ethernet are critical 
uh, uh, for the vehicle. And also the AI capability is something actually we are starting to ramp up within the Sky OS. How we can uh, integrate, I mean, the AI capability, I mean, within this OS concept, it's kind of becoming more like a, a commodity, I mean, for various, I mean, ECU domains and they can leverage. So this is like a, a unified uh, vehicle OS concept and consolidate and orchestrate the com computing, uh, computing resource within the vehicle actually, and we are actually in, uh, able to use this OS concept to manage and integrate all the subsystem and uh, uh, within this uh, picture. So this is the production timeline of the SkyOS. So uh, we have three generations, NT1, NT2, and NT3. Uh, NT2 is the mainstream amateur uh, product actually we are selling on the market in the last two years. Uh, there are around like eight different models. And NT3 is the latest uh, platform. We just launched our first vehicle last month and uh, delivered those vehicles I mean, to the customers, I mean, uh, around uh, like uh, three weeks ago. And on the NT1, actually, we only have very limited I mean, middleware uh, and their SkyOS concept. And in NT2, actually, we started delivering a couple of OS, including uh, SkyOS L, C, and R, and uh, with our uh, eight different vehicle models. Uh, but starting from Q3 this year, just last month, I mean, the full suite of SkyOS I mean, rolled out with our NT3 platform. The first vehicle I will show off in the, uh, in the, in the, in the following slides. And in the future, actually, we will have like, uh, over 10 plus vehicle models I mean, uh, equipped with all these SkyOS uh, uh, software I mean, on them. The deployment, I mean, so far we have over 600 uh, a thousand new vehicle actually already delivered to the customer in the last 10 years. And uh, we are actually have the rapid expansion this moment. We are selling around uh, uh, 20,000 20, vehicle every month, I mean, starting from uh, earlier this year. And with the new sub-brand actually on the NT3, we, we aim to double the uh, number of the vehicle we sell, we are selling, I mean, in each month. So there will be a lot of I mean, exciting moment <laughs> in the future years. And uh, next I will talk about a little bit of our journey of ICO4 based OS in new. So this is our first vehicle on the NT3. Uh, we started delivering this uh, uh, around the end of September, uh, three weeks ago. We already, uh, I believe we already sell around a thousand of them I mean, at this moment in the last three weeks. It's kind of like a, a, our sub-brand we call the Envo. So Neo is our main brand. It's like a premium vehicle models, I mean, like a, for the high-end market. But the Envo is targeting for the mainstream market. It's much cheaper, but it's also uh, with very high quality. So this one actually equipped with our ICU 4 based OS. <laughs> Then we, why we pick uh, ICO4, I mean, a couple years ago? Because, I mean, we really believe, we have a strong belief of ICO4 uh, into uh, NEO's long-term vision. Uh, we want to, I mean, as, as in terms of the Sky OSI, we really want to de deliver the state-of-art, I mean, safety o uh, vehicle OS with the best in-class performance and reliability. And uh, we also want to support a wi wide feature spectrum of various application scenario. Right now, it's limited to the vehicle body control, but we are also, I mean, putting into the digital cockpit or even edge AI or autonomous driving actually for the future generation as well. So this is only the start of it. And uh, uh, we really, I mean, we really want to leverage, I mean, the SEL force proven strength in the safety critical system and the formal verification. So when we use the SEO4 kernel, we, I mean, we are very careful, I mean, not touching anything that, I mean, within this formal verification scope. So we try to, I mean, uh, keep very strong uh, safety foundation for the vehicle OS. <coughs> and in terms of developing this uh, Sky OS I'm based on SEO4, uh, the timeline is like, uh, uh, roughly like this. Uh, around 21, uh, 2021 and 2022, we uh, start, I mean, uh, kick off this project, I mean, uh, with like around two or three people. Yan Yan is our uh, chief architect at that time.
but it's not a large team. <laughs> we start building some POC on top of SE for kernel with our uh, basic uh, ideas. And then starting from uh, 2022 to 2024, that's kind of, uh, we grow uh, this team into around 40 people eventually. And with all these uh, develop developers and also the testing uh, people within the team. It's a global team actually, uh, mostly within uh, uh, China, US. We also have very small team actually in EU as well. And we designed this uh, full-fledged SkyWSIM architecture uh, for our NT3 platform. And uh, then, I mean, by, by now, actually, we are able to deliver this, uh, 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 deliver this uh, uh, SkyWSIM end-to-end, uh, -end, I mean, for the, all this NT3 platform requirement. So it's a very uh, long journey, and we also want to share uh, our experience. I mean, I, I believe Yan Yan already shared a lot of experience. Uh, from um, building this OS, I mean, based on SEO4. And uh, I will probably touch a little bit as well. I mean, <laughs> and uh, in terms of uh, beyond 2024, actually, we also have a very concrete uh, plan. I mean, how we want to uh, expand I mean, into additional safety scenario domains, and also how we want to strengthen the reliability further uh, based on this uh, uh, first uh, delivery of our OS. And in terms of performance, a lot of things actually we, we have a very solid plan to work on them as well. So, I mean, in, in the last three years, actually, we ran to, I mean, a various challenges, I mean, developing this uh, scale-wise side. Uh, the first is the essential call uh, OS service. I think Yan Yan already mentioned a lot about this. So, I see Alpha Kernel is a very good foundation, I mean, to start with. But uh, I mean, to use it as a, a OS, I mean, we need a lot of I mean, a basic OS service uh, uh, on top of it. Those are essential actually uh, to us. Uh, so we build various things like a process server, uh, memory management, uh, file system server, device server, and also network server. Those are actually very uh, basic. I mean, service that we believe actually enable the OS. I mean, to be function more like, I mean, general purpose OS instead of like a very dedicated uh, some kernel spec from kernel perspective. So we build a bunch of them, I mean, from scratch and uh, then those are in, uh, those, I mean, service enable us, I mean, to build a very uh, solid, I mean, top layer, I mean, to enable a, a bunch of, I mean, uh, applications actually we previously, I mean, uh, migrated from the Linz domain, I mean, to this uh, new OS. And the next one is the POSIX uh, interface. Uh, I believe Yan Yan also uh, uh, emphasized this a lot. Why we uh, want to uh, uh, support the POSIX interface? So this is actually very critical. We build a lot, a lot of things like a process, I mean, related uh, POSIX uh, file system, sockets, signals, IPCs. As you can know, actually, we, we are an OS team. So we have, for example, we, I just mentioned, we have like maybe 30 to roughly 40 people, I mean, within the team. But we have a much larger application team, I mean, as the downstream users, like hundreds of them. I mean, how we want to enable them to develop on top of our OS? I mean, so if we really want to educate the whole application team, to understand SEL4 and to use all this special specialized interface to write their application, that's gonna be a huge effort. I mean, for us, I mean, for the company. I mean, I don't think that there is a way I can, I can do it at that time. So we also, we, we are developing our OS in the, uh, in the same time. And also we want to make this e really easy for the developers, I mean, to migrate their uh, existing application, I mean, from the other OS, I mean, to our new OS. And also, if we want to develop the new one, I mean, they have very uh, easy to use, I mean, very familiar environment, I mean, they can uh, develop their own applications for the OS. And uh, if the OS is not capable to do something at that time, they can probably develop something on the Linux and uh, test it within the Linux, and then they can quickly migrate those things, I mean, to the new OS when things are ready. So all those things are really critical for us, I mean, at that time. So that's why we support, I mean, uh, what I call, I call the subset of POSIX interface. We support a, around maybe uh, uh, 300 of them, and, and so far. It's not like a full set of the uh, POSIX interface, 
but uh, those are probably uh, necessary to support uh, a good set of uh, applications on top of it. So that's a huge effort. We leverage a lot of things from muscle lipsy, but that's very limited uh, support, I mean, within the library. So we have to build a bunch of them, I mean, on top of it. The third one is the two, two chain and also the SDK. Uh, this was uh, uh, mentioned as well uh, previous, in the previous talk. So we have this, uh, the tooling is not imp only important actually for the applications, also very important for uh, our OS developers. We need to understand what's happening in the OS at each moment. We need to collect all the data points, all the logs I mean, within the OS. We need to understand the performance bottleneck and also maybe triage I and mean, things within very limited resource scenarios. Those are very critical, I mean, if we really want to uh, ship something in a production environment instead of like, uh, I mean, playing it in the uh, research project. And also the SDK is very important for the downstream users to quickly, I mean, build their uh, uh, environment and they are able to test their applications. So all those things are is very essential. I mean, we are enable not only the OS team and also all these application uh, developers. I mean, they are able to uh, uh, develop their applications. I mean, uh, together with us, and also they are able to test their applications uh, on top of it and debug it. I mean, with the, all the uh, tools. I mean, they are familiar with. I mean, we even have our own, for example, the GDB and also various. I mean, debugging tools to support I mean, all these uh, very common scenarios. Uh, eventually, as the leader of the team, I also want to uh, talk about a little bit about this. We have been searching I mean, the talents I mean, globally <laughs> in the last few years. And uh, for the SEO4, I mean, we really see this is challenging. It's hard to find the talents in this, uh, in this community. Because we, we have a lot of people here, I mean, let's uh, say maybe globally, I mean, we have like maybe a thousand or maybe two thousand of them, but still it's a very limited, uh, it's a very small community, I mean, for, for, the, for the company, I mean, to, uh, for this kind of, the scale of this project, especially if you want to go with the production, you really want to build up a very solid team, like, a, uh, for example, I have like a maybe uh, 40 people, I mean, in the uh, uh, SEO, with SkyOS M, that means, I mean, we have spent, I mean, huge amount of efforts, I mean, try to lo locate those people. For example, like, uh, especially the top leader, like Yan Yan, I mean, they really understand the internal dynamica, they really understand the internal of the system, they really kind of, I mean, can design, I mean, those, I mean, the OS core service on top of the SEO form. They know how to leverage the performance, how to leverage the safety, I mean, from this, those, I mean, these kernels. Those are very important for us. And uh, I mean, that's why actually we, I mean, both Yan Yan and I would like to, I mean, emphasize more, I mean, how we can uh, lower the, the entry bar of this, uh, uh, the using the SEO4. Eventually, we are able to, I mean, get more people, more talents into this domain. And then more people are able to, I mean, pick up the more, I mean, the insights and the internals of the SEO4 eventually. So yeah, I, I would like to see this is happening, I mean, uh, with our uh, contribution as well, try to grow this uh, community more. And the other thing is that uh, the safety, we, uh, we also, uh, as, as, the, as the vehicle OS, actually the safety is very important, of course. So we build up our hierarchical uh, safety design actually from the ground up. And uh, yesterday we talked about the safety hub. I mean, if you look at the whole system uh, layer, so we have uh, uh, four layers list here, chipset, I mean, the, uh, stand for the hardware, a microkernel, the ICO4, and also the safety hub and the OS service. So we have the monitoring for each of the layer, actually, we actively monitor, I mean, for them. And then we have also the recovery mechanism I mean, for the three layers, the meaning the uh, three uh, software layers. Uh, for the hardware, actually, probably we, the only way we can recover is the uh, reset the chip, reboot it. But uh, for the software, we are also, I mean, have the different uh, recovery mechanism, I mean, uh, each layer. Uh, for example, the OS service, actually, we try to uh, implement the, uh, the recovery for each of the service. We are, we are not fully ready there. But we try to, I mean, get some of the service I mean, able to recover them, I mean, by themselves. And eventually, we are looking for, I mean, whether we can 
uh, I mean, recover each of the uh, major OS service, I mean, at the runtime. That will uh, definitely I mean, improve the reliability for the whole system. And the safety hardware is also one of the very important uh, component, actually, for this. Try to uh, orchestrate I mean, all the safety monitoring and also uh, instrument some uh, uh, mitigation I mean, when we see some risk I mean, in the system. This is the kind of the whole architecture of the Sky OSI. So uh, in the middle, we, we, we talk about this uh, process server. I mean, it's very uh, kind of foundation for, the, uh, for all the other service. And also we have the underlying the file system server, uh, device, ser device service, device driver service, and also the network service. And on top of it, and we have our uh, lib VCs, I mean, to uh, provide a bunch of, I mean, uh, syscalls. And also the uh, POSIX, I mean, uh, interface we build, I mean, on top of this muscle libc. And uh, they are able to, I mean, support, I mean, various applications. I mean, definitely we are not supporting this uh, uh, graphic, I mean, the UI stuff, I mean, this moment. But it provides the full functionality, I mean, for all those, I mean, with the storage, with the network. And, uh, uh, I mean, those, I mean, applications kind of running, I mean, uh, without any problem on our OS. Yeah, this is kind of the very uh, brief introduction about the journey of the SEL4 based OS in new. And uh, the last one, I will talk a little bit about the future planning. Uh, with the launch of the, I called it the uh, Envo L60, I mean, last month, this is just the beginning, actually. So we will launch, I mean, uh, more vehicle models um, on the NT3. And at this moment, we are also looking into our future planning, I mean, beyond the NT3, the, maybe some something like uh, uh, NT4 and uh, something, I mean, the future platform. Uh, so we want to uh, expand uh, the uh, microkernel-based micro architecture into more automated domains. Right now, it's mostly within the body control, and uh, we are looking into, I mean, other domains as well. No, uh, whenever we see some safety uh, requirement, I mean, we will see how we can uh, fit our uh, scale OSM into those uh, scenarios. Uh, so this is kind of like very promising future actually for the uh, Sky OSI. Uh, we want to do a lot of things actually on, the, on this OS. Uh, for example, uh, I just talked about uh, expansion into uh, additional domains. And also we want to do a lot of I mean, uh, performance optimization and uh, capability expansion I mean, on top of this uh, first version of the Sky OSI. And in the future actually we are also looking into a uh, feasible way how we can do some certi safety certification. I mean, starting from with some core service, I mean, we build, I mean, on top of SE4 uh, kernel. And uh, there are a lot of interesting topics actually we are, uh, we are planning right now. For example, we talk about the OS server recovery. Uh, we want to look into all these major OS service, I mean, how we can do them. Uh, we want to improve the real-time scheduling because we are, I mean, supporting the multiple CPU right now and with a bunch of, I mean, uh, uh, critical and non-critical applications, I mean, mixed together. How we can uh, improve our real-time scheduling to uh, provide like a better uh, service, I mean, for those applications. We are looking into a different CPU architecture like a RISC-V right now. And uh, a Rust uh, is also something actually we want to enable uh, for those application developers so they can uh, build their applications with less uh, memory related problems. And uh, uh, STR is the sleep uh, to recovery. So basically we want to look into how we can quickly boot up our system. So we are able to uh, throw some really uh, time, time sensitive applications I mean, uh, uh, from the body control domains. So that's something definitely, I mean, uh, very uh, interesting. And uh, uh, AI runtime is something actually we are looking into as well, because I mean, uh, in this AI era, we see a lot of um, potential use case. I mean, for the, uh, for the uh, it's not like a lar large language model, but on those edge device, we are looking into a very small machine learning algorithm, I mean, supporting maybe like a, a personalization, I mean, to tune the temperature, or maybe to tune your battery, I mean, how you can use some AI algorithm to learn from the pattern to, uh, to adapt into this. 
So those things are very uh, 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 promising actually. Uh, probably we will enable on this uh, scale OSM as well. And uh, uh, the AD library, something actually we potentially will look into the AD autonomous driving domain as well. And uh, tooling, yeah, I just mentioned, definitely something we want to uh, further enhance to provide like a, a full suite of uh, tooling to site for the uh, core developers and also the application developers. And the driver is another thing we are looking into, like a, a PCIe, maybe USB, those things are, I mean, we treat as a complicated, I mean, as first step. But uh, if we want to uh, expand into other domains, probably we will touch those uh, topics as well. So I see actually a lot of, I mean, uh, similar topics in this uh, ICO for Summit. So that's kind of like uh, we can, we see a lot of synergy actually. We can not only leverage the community efforts, actually we want to contribute to the community as well to see how we can, I mean, uh, enable all those things, I mean, uh, for our news vehicle. And we're also very proud actually we are active uh, contribution to the open source uh, ICO for community. We have been the premier member of the ICO4 Foundation, and uh, we have been the silver sponsor of ICO4 Summit since uh, 2023. And we are also backing up this uh, LAN OS initiative because we see it aligns with a lot of our long-term visions for the OS. Probably we have very limited contribution at this moment <laughs> because we have been busy, I mean, uh, making our first release uh, so far. But we are really, I mean, uh, we will really want to see how we can contribute uh, in this uh, initiative as well. So looking ahead, actually, we are very excited to force the uh, deeper technical collaborations, I mean, uh, with the broader SEO4 ecosystem. So there are a lot of ideas from us and also from the community, actually. So I believe we can uh, work together <laughs> yeah, to uh, grow this community. Yeah, that's uh, actually that's all from uh, my side. Yeah, I, sorry. Yeah, uh, since you stay at the end of my talk, so I would like to share another okay. video. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is what we call the champagne tower on the other way. <laughs> So thanks. So why do I want to show this? So this is the second vehicle model we are going to launch in Q1 next year. And uh, it's called the ET9. So it's a very high-end vehicle uh, and the new brand on the NT3 platform. And this one actually comes with our in-house uh, developer SOC supporting the, all the uh, automobile driving domain. And uh, so with this vehicle, it also equipped with the last puzzle from SkyOS we call the Sky OS H, the hypervisor. The Sky OS H, I mean, is also based on the ICL4 microkernel. And it shares the same code base with the Sky OS M. And with this hypervisor, we are able to uh, provide the, not the full, I mean, uh, virtualization capability, of course. It is designed for the uh, resource isolation purpose. It do some minimum virtualization, I mean, like uh, virtualize the SMU, virtualize the storage, all kinds of things. But uh, the primary pur purpose is for the resource isolation, to isolate all the compute and all this uh, uh, in, in terms of this uh, uh, very complex uh, uh, SOC domain. So this is, uh, this will be very exciting moment. I mean, we will, I mean, deliver the last piece of uh, SkyOS, I mean, on NT3, and it also come with the ICO4. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So that's all from my talk. That was really cool. Um, questions? <clears throat> so developing and maintaining your own operating systems is a significant effort. Are you planning to license this to other car manufacturers? Can you say anything about your wider plans there? 
Yeah, I think that's a really good question. So uh, I talked about the uh, supply chain a little bit actually in the slides. So we, are, we do want to uh, adopt more suppliers into our ecosystem. So potentially, I mean, they can develop their own uh, uh, applications I mean, on top of our SkyOI system within their own like a soft, uh, hardware component. I mean, typically like a tier one, tier two suppliers, I mean, they usually use like an OS vendor solution. I mean, for the OS, I mean, they can probably replace it with our own SkyOS uh, solution. And then, I mean, when they develop their uh, uh, business, I mean, uh, application on top of it, and it can be integrated into our vehicle very naturally. So we plan to, uh, this is kind of one of the model. The other model is that we are, uh, for NEO, actually, we are also, uh, licensing our technology, I mean, to uh, other companies right now. So it's, uh, it's, it's not only the uh, software, sometimes we license the hardware, maybe the architecture design as well, but uh, it definitely comes with our ScaleOS license. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I mean, from, from a, I just looked at you, like from a security point of view, right, I, in general software, we can hardly trust it. Like even if you put SL4 inside of it, right? Like if you build stuff on top, it's, it's not very trustworthy. It's like, how do you handle security? Like do you, at, at your company, do you have like red team trying to attack your thing and trying to figure out how, you, because I mean, like if you have someone take control of your car, that's pretty scary. If you have someone take control <laughs> of all your cars in your country, that's yeah. even scarier, right? And like, yeah. that's definitely a possibility. It's like, it's going to happen. So it's not a, it's not a question. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't talk about this. Uh, I think we talk a little bit about the. Uh, I think we talk about the security in our uh, new uh, innovation day at that time. So security, from my perspective, is not like a, um, not only about OS. It has to be like a, a full uh, solution. For example, I mean, maybe you you have like a a, a, a firewall or something. I mean, you can probably do some. Uh, uh, to, de to detect and uh, prevent some kind of uh, intrusion uh, from the outside. But you have to have built up a layer of uh, security. It's a similar, some, some concept similar to the safety. It's not like, I mean, you can enhance one point of the system, you are okay. Yeah, exactly. You have to, I mean, build a, a full set of solution. I mean, you can probably, I mean, build a layer of security, and then you are able to, uh, I mean, it's called something called a defensing layer. So you have to build a different layer of the defense. I mean, you are able to, I mean, prevent and detect all those attacks. So that's something actually we have a dedicated team within you uh, working on the safety and the security perspective for the vehicle. And we will provide uh, security uh, and the safety capability in each of the layer, uh, in, in hardware, in OS, in middleware. And also, for example, we have the gateway, so how we can uh, deploy, I mean, the security solution on gateway as well. And also in terms of communication, because we, we have way more communication within the vehicle right now. I mean, how we can I mean, prevent some kind of uh, malicious attack from the other domain, how do they authentication uh, kind of stuff. So those are well designed I mean, by the security team as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So seeing that we got SL4 on a car. Does it mean that you have an ISO 26262 certification? And if so, to what automotive safety integrity level? Yeah, uh, I think that's a very good question, yeah. So uh, in terms of uh, ISO 62622, I think that's uh, come with the, uh, mm, mm, the same time with the AutoSAR, I mean, a similar concept. So we do have uh, uh, emphasize on the safety side. But uh, uh, in terms of uh, mm, in terms of development and communication, actually we we apply a lot of same concept from the ISO 6262, like uh, I mean all these coding standard. For example, we leverage all the kind of Parasoft, I mean all kinds of powerful tool, may able to I mean uh, get us I mean to comply with the uh, this, this those standard. But uh, in terms of certification, actually we we are not there yet. I mean, we have to uh, get things ready as the first step, and then we are able to probably, I mean, go through this, uh, uh, I would say probably a lengthy, heavy process 
uh, I mean, in the future. So uh, I would say probably right now, uh, the primary focus is that we how we can ensure I mean the safety safety goal at the vehicle uh, vehicle level. So we have the dedicated just as I mentioned we have a dedicated safety team. They can decompose the safety goal at each of the layer in the system. And for example, we have the uh, design I mean safety hub and all kinds of monitor recovery within the OIS. We have other uh, mitigation uh, uh, mechanism I mean for the safety purpose within the vehicle. So those things, I mean, we put together so we can achieve the safety goal. But the standard, I think we will, uh, for, especially for the certification, I believe we will look into this in the future. It's one of our uh, focus. But uh, right now, we want to get all the things, I mean, uh, ready as a first step. <laughs> Uh, you you mentioned how hard it is to find people with with microkernel experience, which I think everyone in industry in this room can sympathize with. Um, you, you know, obviously we're looking for universities to pick up the slack with with teaching those concepts. But how much success have you found? Um, you know, training up people internally on those skills. Uh, yeah, uh, I would say uh, it's hard, actually. I mean, it's not only specific for the uh, SEO4. I mean, nowadays, I feel that uh, uh, because of this, uh, all this uh, cloud computing, or maybe right now it's the AI uh, deep learning error, so a lot of people, I mean, are, I mean, diving into those errors. So even in the research uh, academia conference, you will see there are much less people, or for example, in the SICOM, SOSP, those top conference, I mean, for those core OS development or maybe core, I mean, network, I mean, research, I mean, we are losing people, actually. And uh, they are moving to new topic, and uh, uh, I mean, I don't blame them for that, <laughs> but uh, that's uh, what we have right now. So for the ICL4, I see, I mean, typically, I mean, the OS is very, um, I mean, uh, hard, I mean, to get in, I mean, for the fresh uh, students. Uh, especially for the SEO4, I mean, we don't have many uh, senior people in this area, I mean, to coach them. So that's another thing, actually, I, I would see, I mean, so in the, definitely, I mean, in the universities, I mean, if we get more people, I mean, can do some hands-on experience with the system, they potentially, I mean, can use it in the, in the future in the industry. But right now, I mean, we try to, just, just as I said, we try to uh, see how we can lower the entry bar, I mean, to use those system. And we can potentially grow, I mean, maybe 10x or maybe, I mean, more people. I mean, they do have the hands-on experience, just like Windows, right? Like uh, 30 years ago, I mean, how people to use Windows, I mean, they can get used to it. Eventually, I mean, all the people move to the Windows. So I want to see, I mean, how we can, I mean, improve this situation. I mean, we, we want to contribute the from this as well. Um, thanks again, Ning. That was, <laughs> that was really fascinating. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.